In this video, we'll talk about how we can perform transient analysis using LTSpice. Transient analysis is simply monitoring a voltage or a current, so voltage at a particular node or current through a particular component with respect to time. And the, the circuit that we will consider here just for this demonstration is a first order RC circuit and we'll use a time constant of seven milliseconds uh, for the circuit. So the first thing that I would do is go into component and pick up a voltage source. I'm going to add that voltage source to my schematic. I'm going to simply zoom out a little bit so that I can see a little bit more. Um, I'm going to pick up a resistor. I'm going to do a control R to rotate it, place it over here, escape out of that. I'm going to also need a capacitor. So I'm going to pick up a C1 capacitor, place it over here, escape out of that. I'm going to also need a ground node. So I'll place it right here. Then I will take my wire tool and connect my voltage source to, uh, went longer than I needed. All right, wire source to the resistor. The resistor would come around, connect to the capacitor, and then the, I would close the circuit Finally, I'll connect the ground. Now that my circuit is complete, I'll choose the component values. So for example, for R1, I can pick a 1.5 kilo ohm resistor. And if I wanted my time constant to be seven milliseconds, then the product of R and C would need to be seven milliseconds. Now, given that I have ran arbitrarily chosen R1 to be 1.5K, that leaves me with a capacitor to be 4.7 micro. So I would enter 4.7U for the value of C1. So that should give me the time constant of seven milliseconds. And later in this video, we will verify whether it comes out to be seven milliseconds or not. Now I've chosen R1 and C1, but for the voltage source, I don't have uh, any uh, properties that I've assigned. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose a square wave for V1. So for that, I would need to right click and as soon as I right click, it gives me a, an option to set its DC value and the series resistance. I need this to be an AC source. So I'm not gonna enter anything over here. Instead, I'll click on advanced. And over here, I, I have a bunch of options. I can set this to be a pulse or sinusoid or an exponential. I can choose many different functions for my voltage source. In this case, I'm going to use pulse. Now, once I pick pulse, it's going to give me a bunch of options and I'll walk you guys through how to set these options. The initial value for my square wave or pulse waveform, I want that to be zero. And the on voltage, I want that to be 2.5 volts. And the delay for that, I'm just gonna pick uh, 0 0.1 picoseconds, a very, very, very small delay. And the same delay I'm gonna use for my rise time and fall time. So this is essentially, 0.1 times 10 to the negative 12. So that's going to be a very, very, very small value. Um, for the amount of time that I want my square wave to be on, I'm going to choose 50 milliseconds. And for the time period, I'll choose a 50% duty cycle waveform. So for the time period, I'll just simply double it. So I've got 100 milliseconds for the time period. And I want to look at say, two cycles of this square wave. So those are my options that I've set up for my voltage source. Once I say, okay, uh, a big uh, script for this corresponding to the voltage source is gonna get displaced. Just for the sake of convenience, I'm gonna place it over here. I've just used my move tool to move that command down here. Now that my circuit is set up, I'm ready to simulate. So I'm gonna go into this run button here, and that is going to give me a bunch of uh, options in order to how to choose between the simulation types. So I can do an AC analysis, DC sweep, uh, a DC operating point is something that we have been uh, looking at earlier in this course, but for today we are looking at transient analysis. So I wanna do this for two full cycles of the square wave. So my stop time would be 200 milliseconds and I can use a maximum step size of say one microsecond. Uh, or even if I can make it smaller, so 0 0.1 microsecond. So that's a small enough time, uh, time step. And I'm gonna need, I'm gonna look at the waveforms from zero to 200 milliseconds. And I'm gonna say, okay, 
and I have placed it right underneath over here. So if I can zoom out a bit, you can see that I have placed it right underneath this pulse waveform. Now I'm that that's it. That's all I need to to set up my uh, volt the circuit, the voltage source specifications, and my simulation command. Now I'm going to hover my mouse on top of this voltage source, uh, and I will click on this particular point in order to measure the input voltage or the square wave. When I click on that, I'm going to see two cycles of my voltage source V1. That's my square wave uh, going from zero to 2.5 volts and on time is 50 milliseconds as shown, off time is 100 milliseconds and it repeats uh, for two cycles. That's what I used to set up my voltage source and I'm able to monitor that once I hover my uh, probe, this is a voltage probe at this point and click on it. Now, I, as, as an output, I want to monitor the voltage across the capacitor with respect to ground. So simply I would need to connect a click at this particular point right here at the top of this capacitor in order to plot the voltage across the capacitor. And when I do that, LT Spice is going to give me this nice charging and discharging characteristic of this first order circuit that is essentially going to be my uh, output in this case. So this is how you would run a transient simulation and notice over here, we call it transient because the x-axis is time and we are monitoring a voltage on the y-axis. We could also be monitoring the current on the y-axis. So for example, if I hover my mouse on top of my capacitor or resistor, it gives me an arrow and that arrow indicates the direction of current. So if I click on that in uh, IC1, that corresponds to actually the, the current through the capacitor, which is the same as the current through the, the resistor. I don't need that right now, so I'm going to remove this. And I'm back to the voltage source at the input and the output. Now I can uh, zoom to fit so that I can, I can see it properly. And I'm going to lower this down so that we can focus on uh, what, what information can be obtained from the input and output traces. Now, I can do a few things here so I can mark the data points. So for example, I have marked all the data points. For every measurement that I took, those points are marked because I used a maximum step size of 0.1 microsecond. Those are very, very close to each other in this case. I can also turn it off by clicking it again. Uh, now, for example, if I wanted to export all of this data into a CSV file that I could import into MATLAB, I can also do that. I would need to right click on this graph and then go into file and then export data as text. And that would give me a text file that I could later import in MATLAB, for example. Uh, how do we do cursors over here? So in order to uh, highlight some, mark some interesting points, what you can do is you can hover at the, at the red mark here, that is voltage at node 0001. That was the one that was at the top of this uh, voltage source. I can uh, left click on it and that will, Okay, that that will give me this cursor that is that is saying one, and I can place it anywhere I want. And the window corresponding to cursor one shows up over here in this window, which gives me the horizontal and vertical values. So, for example, if I if I wanted to, uh, this is for cursor two, and cursor true cursor two is tracking the red waveform, the input waveform and I can leave it at this point here, and I can bring in my cursor one, uh, maybe somewhere close to where I would expect uh, the time constant measurement to be. So cursor two, I'll move it right at the top here, very close to 50 milliseconds. That's when my capacitor starts to discharge, and I'm gonna quickly use my calculator here to tell me what is 36.8% uh, of 2.5 volts, uh, which is simply 2.5 divided by E. So that is 0 0.9197. So at 0 0.9197 volts, I would pick, pick that to be my second marker, uh, first marker point. So right here, I'm moving cursor one 
and cursor 1 needs to come here cursor 2 com needs to come over here and the vertical on cursor 2 there it is okay now it's tracking the blue waveform uh, so for the blue waveform I needed that to be about 0. Point, okay so this is at 9 1 9 okay somewhere over here so this is at 915 millivolts um, I needed that to be close to 9 but that that is okay that's an approximation there and then I can move this to right here now that is going to give me a differential of 7.2 milliseconds and I can get uh, get the differential between cursor 2 and cursor 1 on the vertical as well as for the horizontal. If I wanted a time constant of 7 milliseconds, I'm looking at the differential with the horizontal, which is about 7.2. So I simply put, put a marker on my input and I put a marker on my point that is very close to uh, 0 0.92, for example. And that is resulting in 7.2 milliseconds. Uh, there is some approximation error over here because of the step size limitation, but that generally gives you an idea about how do you run a, a transient analysis? How do you pick the properties of an AC source? How do you measure a voltage with respect to time? And even how do you measure current with respect to time in a given circuit? Uh, how do you put in markers? And how do you export to a text file? All right, I hope you find that helpful.